stand as you are able. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For the Lord your God am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 19 will be read responsibly by half verse. The heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another. And one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language. 
Their sound has gone out into all lands. And their message to the ends of the world. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from his burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandments of the Lord are clear and give life to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. Much more to be desired are they than gold, much than much more than much fine gold. By them also is your servant enlightened. And in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since, in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided, through the foolishness of our proclamation, to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs, and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, the money changers are on Kirkwood or downtown. They are more than willing to take your money in exchange for food. And while I've been here at Trinity a very long time, I don't remember that Trinity has been filled with the frightened bleeding of goats, the raucous mooing of cows, or the frantic cries of birds dumped out of their cages. Although we have had cats, dogs, chickens, a snake or two, and even a horse welcomed except for a raised, random raised eyebrow. Trinity is long past receiving offerings of livestock and grains, but offerings are still important. Fundamental, an important fundamental reality of the church. Offerings of your presence, your time, energy, and money keep the church vibrant and able to serve in our community and in the world. Fortunately, none of us have to buy or herd livestock into the church or pay exorbitant exchange rate fees in order to pray and worship. But this is how we find the worshipers at the temple this morning. Jewish men were required to the come to the temple three times a year if they lived within 20 miles of the temple. This created a significant challenge. Moving livestock over this distance invariably meant that the animals were injured or damaged, no longer perfect as required for the temple sacrifices. Hence, the sellers at the temple took advantage of the pilgrims in price gouging. And those with coin offerings were also required to change their coinage, which was usually Roman, for the required temple coinage. More opportunities for price gouging. For some of those coming to pray and offer sacrifice for sins, the trip alone became a sacrifice that some could ill afford. The temple had evolved into a noisy, irreverent, 
marketplace. And Jesus' righteous anger was not at the worshipers. His anger was at those who seemed to care little for God and God's sacred space or for their fellow Jews. God's house is a safe place of prayer. God does not require blood sacrifice, but a repentant heart. Scholars have long had discussions about the placement of this pericope in John when compared with the three synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. In the synoptic gospels, this confrontation occurs toward the end of each gospel and initiates the Jewish authorities' demand for Jesus' execution. In John's gospel, this portrayal of an angry Jesus leads to confrontation, but it is a confrontation with the reality of who Jesus is, the Son of God. The temple is the locus of God's presence in the world in that time. That was where God was located. But John's evangelism requires that Jesus become the focus of worship. For a small minority sect of Christians, as they face barriers to their growing movement, they are needing a clarity and assistance overcoming the barriers created by their new beliefs. The gospel invokes a picture of boundaries and barriers. We could get lost in the semantics of these two words going down some rabbit hole, but hopefully not this morning. A boundary is something that indicates or fixes a limit or an extent. Neighborhoods, sporting events, places of worship. A barrier is something that impedes or separates. Cost of housing and higher education. Laws that try to ban books. Fear prejudice, limited social interactions. We know about boundaries and barriers. We know their power. Just look to the South, to Ukraine, to Texas, and to the Holy Land. Boundaries and barriers can easily cause destruction and death. The Jewish temple most definitely had boundaries limiting who could enter and when. The temple priests and authorities made barriers that created hardships for worshipers. Roman law created significant boundaries and barriers by controlling much of Jewish life. Additionally, Jewish authorities seemed to relish making laws that created hardships for Jewish lives. The laws, at least 637 of them, covered all aspects of life. God, on the other hand, just found it necessary to hand off to Moses only 10 commandments or 10 teachings, as they are sometimes called. Jewish authorities seemed to think that God's ten teachings were not prescriptive enough to control all of life. The covenant of God was waylaid by those who seemed to think that human lawmaking could improve upon God's laws. God's ten commandments or teachings are not about barriers, as some people like to think. Don't do this, don't do that. They are not a list of do's and don'ts. Primarily, they are a revelation of God. These teachings create a rule of life. 
instructing us in living out our relationships with God and others in a way that brings wholeness, respect, and dignity to one another. God's teachings have the power to lift us up in our relationship with God and one another. They are about having honor and respect for others and asking the same for ourselves. They are the foundation of our baptismal covenant. God does not create barriers in the covenantal giving of these Ten Commandments. We, we are the ones who have created barriers. We have allowed anxiety, fear, ignorance, anger, hate, pride, demonization of others to become barriers in our lives and those of others. These barriers that eventually become unbreakable boundaries that many believe should never be transgressed. I wonder about the barriers that we create. Is Trinity inviting and welcoming to new and unchurched people? Does how we talk about God and sins and forgiveness and even political leaders create barriers to people's beliefs about God and church? Do others see God in our welcome or are they turned away, turned off by barriers of indifference to their presence, to their lack of familiarity or their confusion? Is Trinity Episcopal Church too mysterious, too fine? A few years ago, someone from a group with whom Trinity was collaborating on a pretty regular basis said to me, we thought Trinity was just a bunch of old, rich, white people. And they weren't being critical. He was just sharing an experience and a thought that he was having at the time. Imagine the barrier that this creates. Perhaps there is some truth in it and in the way Trinity is perceived. It prevents some from approaching and some from staying. During this time of Lent, it seems appropriate that we should be hearing the Ten Commandments. They are guidance for life with one another and in our relationships with God. It is, Lent is a fitting time to be open to the revelation of God in the Sinai Covenant and to experience Jesus' righteous cleansing in the temple on behalf of of those being beaten down. Jesus' anger and these commitments, commandments reveal a God present and involved in all our lives who expects us to have righteous anger to clear the way for godly changes that can bring down boundaries and barriers that separate and destroy. What are the barriers in your lives? Amen. Please stand as you are able. We continue on page six of the bulletin with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God. The Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under
Let us come before God in this Lenten tide, praising and blessing and adoring our ever-living God. In confidence and trust, we pray for the church. Father, enliven the church for its mission. That we may be salt to the earth and light to the world. Breathe fresh life into your people. Give us power to reveal Christ in word and action. We pray for the world. We pray for an end of war, especially in Ukraine, in the Holy Land. We pray for the hostages in Gaza. We pray for all Palestinians, all residents of Gaza who are in fear, who have died, who are living life without dignity. Creator of all, lead us and every people into ways of justice and peace. That we may respect one another in freedom and truth. Awake in us a sense of wonder for the earth and all that is in it. Teach us to care creatively for its resources. We pray for the community. God of truth, inspire with your wisdom those whose decisions affect the lives of others. That all may act with integrity and courage. Give grace to all whose lives are linked with ours. May we serve Christ one another and love as he loves us. We pray for those in need. God of hope, comfort and restore all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Brett, Leo, Judith, Elizabeth, Evan, Mary Jo, Jim, Mary Alice, Vicki, Dad, <coughs> Cynthia, Elizabeth, Nancy, John, David, Maggie, Mary Ann, Claudia, Carol, Lee, Noel, Don Moore, Brenda, Andy, Maynard, Linda, Joan, Beth, John, and Donovan. May they know the power of your healing love. Make us willing agents of your compassion. Strengthen us as we share in making people whole. We remember those who have died and those who mourn. We remember with thanksgiving those who have died in the faith of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. We pray especially for Nick and, and, and for Mary. Father, into your hands we command them. Give comfort to those who mourn, especially the Kelly and her family, the Hallett family, and, and all the families of the departed. Bring them peace in their own loss. We praise you for Perpetua and Felicity, Gregory of Nyssa, and all your saints who have entered your eternal glory. May their examples inspire and encourage us. We pray for Trinity. We pray for Justin, Michael, and Jennifer, for all our clergy, congregation, and ministries. Your word is a lamp for our feet. In darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy, help us, Heavenly Father, to trust your love, to serve your purpose, and to praise your name. Direct us, O Lord, in all our doings with your most gracious favor, and further us with your continual help, that in all our works begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name, and finally, by your mercy, obtain everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, we confess the good sin against you, oppose your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love. 
Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Beloved and forgiven children of God, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Welcome, everyone, and a special welcome to anyone who is here for the first time or, uh, or uh, returning or visiting. Uh, however, whatever brought you in here makes us rejoice. I would like to get you to know you better, and uh, so please do uh, catch me at the door of the church after the service, and we'll figure out uh, how to do that. We have a, a, a number of things we'd like to draw to your attention, so we'll start with uh, Virginia. Good morning, um, I'm Virginia Hall, and I want to first of all say, and my looking at my bulletin before the service, I'm so excited about the way the bulletin is user-friendly and all of that. And with that, my mistake, my bad, as they say, um, Daughters of the King meets on the second Monday of the month at 5.30, and in the bulletin it says this Monday, which is the fourth, that was my error, not David's, not Emma's, no one else's. And I just want to make sure that you, all women, are welcome to join us. We have study of prayer, service, and evangelism. We're excited to welcome Reverend Matt as our chaplain, and we have lots of good things planned for the year. If you want a support group for any of these to um, boost up your rule of life, please join us. The second. Monday, which is the 11th this month, 5.30 in the library. Thank you. Thank you. Daughters of the King is a wonderful, uh, long-standing uh, organization for Episcopal women who seek to deepen their spirituality, their connection to God, and to carry out service uh, on behalf of the church. So I really uh, highly recommend it. It's a great bunch and uh, a great way to uh, help you bring your faith into your day-to-day -day life, which is one of the harder things, I think, to do as a faithful person. Other announcements that I want to point out are uh, the Cloister Music and Choral Evensong tonight, beginning at 4 o'clock. Uh, we did uh, a similar thing at the beginning of Advent last year, and it was very moving and meaningful. It's a, it's a service of prayer, and, and I think the way the music helps you uh, pray with your heart with your whole body, with into a different type of uh, a way of thinking and being. So I, I recommend that you, if you are able, to come to that. And then I'd uh, like uh, Deacon Connie to talk about uh, the United Thank Offering. I'm sure that some of you have found the little blue boxes that have collapsed right now, but the little blue boxes that are in your pews or the envelopes that are meant to collect money for UTO, the United Thank Offering. This offering has been in existence for the Episcopal Church for years and years, since the late 1800s. They have managed to give out over, I think it is $5 billion in grants across the world. During the month of March, uh, and we will turn these in on Easter Sunday, Think about putting these in every time you have a prayer or a thanksgiving for someone, put a coin in the box or bills if you want to do that. Or you can always send a check um, if you would like to do that as well. There are little booklets out in the Trinity Room that have information about this and I will be in the Great Hall with some more information. So please use this as an Easter discipline or a Lenten discipline and offer prayers as you put your coins in. Thank you. Thank you. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal feast, that fervent in prayer and works of mercy and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs> Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, 
bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Please stand as you are able. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our let us be humble before the Lord. Look mercifully on this, your family, almighty God, that by your great goodness they may be governed and preserved evermore. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Holy Lent. <laughs> 